Today we are going to learn about trigonometry. The National Five Essential Skills are Solving Linear Trig Equations in Degrees So it's all a, a little revision from National Five. You are already familiar from National Five and how to solve linear trig equations in degrees. There are some key steps that we have to follow. We need to make sure we rearrange sine, cos or tan x to make them the subject. We need to ensure we have a cast diagram drawn to identify the quadrants and where the angles lie. We have to either use exact value triangles or a calculator to obtain the angle x and then finally find the angles in each quadrant but it's important that we check they lie within the range that is stated. Example 1. Solve 5 sin x minus 4 equals 0 for x lying between 0 and 360 degrees. So the first step is to rearrange. So 5 sin x minus 4 equals 0 will become 5 sin x equals 4. And then if we divide by 5, we have sin x equal to 4 fifths. From there, we will draw the cast diagram. And we'll sure we tick where sin x is positive because we have sin x equal to positive 4 over 5. So sin is positive in the first and the second quadrant. Next, we're going to calculate the angle x. To do that, we need to do inverse sine of 4 fifths using a calculator, and that gives us an answer of 53.1. The 53.1 degrees is the angle in the first quadrant. However, the angle in the second quadrant we need to obtain by doing 180 take away 53.1. So our final solution for x is 53.1 degrees and 126.9 degrees. Example 2. Solve 3 tan x plus 2 equal to 0 for x between 0 and 360 degrees. So our first step is to rearrange to make tan x the subject. So we'll take our plus 2 over and subtract it to get 3 tan x is equal to negative 2. And then the 3 will come over and divide, change the side, change the operation. So tan x is equal to negative 2 over 3. Step two, we then have to draw a cast diagram and we are going to tick where tan is negative. So our tan graph is negative in our second quadrant between 90 and 180 and it is also negative in our fourth quadrant at between 270 and 360. Now in order to work out the angle in each of these quadrants, we need to know what the angle x is. So we'll do inverse tan of 2 over 3 which gives us 33.7 so that's step 3 calculating the angle x which is 33.7 and what we'll do is use that to get the angle in each quadrant so in the second quadrant there it'll be 180 minus 33.7 degrees and in our fourth quadrant it'll be 360 minus 33.7 degrees and this gives a final solution of 146.3 degrees and 326.3 degrees. Example 3. Solve 7 cos 2x equal to 3 for x lying between 0 and 360 degrees. So the first step is again to make um, cos 2x a subject. So we'll take our 7 over and divide and we'll get cos 2x is equal to 3 over 7. Now, this is slightly different from our previous examples. Our previous examples had one x, which meant there was one wave. And when we have one wave, that means we have two angles. But here we can see we have a two x. Now that means we have two waves between zero and 360. Therefore, there will be four angles that we need to calculate. So there's four places that cos two x is equal to three over seven. Next is we'll uh, draw a cast diagram and we are going to tick the first and the fourth quadrant because cos is positive um, in these quadrants. Next step is we do have to do inverse cos of 3 over 7 and if we do that using a calculator we'll get an answer of 64.6 degrees. Now that is the angle in our first quadrant or that is what 2x is equal to. So we've got 2x is equal to 64.6 degrees. 
and the angle in the fourth quadrant will do 360 minus 64.6 degrees to get 295.4 degrees. Now, these two angles here are for the first wave, but remember we have two waves. So in order to get the next two angles, we have to add 360 degrees to each of these. So adding 360 to 64.6 will give us 424.6 degrees and adding 360 to 295 will give us 655.4 degrees. Now here we have four angles, so we'll put 2x equal to 64.6, 295.4, 424.6, and 655.4. But we've not to solve for 2x, it has to be 1x. So we'll now divide each of these angles by 2, and doing that, we get a solution of 32.3 degrees, 147.7 degrees, 212.3 degrees, and 327.7 degrees. That's four places four angles where cos 2x is equal to 3 over 7 and here is the graph just to show you and the four angles are indicated as well. Example 4. Solve 2 cos of x plus 30 equal to 1. Again for x lying between 0 and 360. So from our functions and graphs unit at higher, we know that if we have 2 cos of x plus 30 degrees, the plus 30 essentially means that the graph has been shifted 30 degrees to the left. We also can know that if it's 2 cos, that means the graph will go up and have a maximum of 2 and a minimum of minus 2. So the first thing we're going to do is rearrange and we'll have cos of x plus 30 equal to 1 half. From there we need to draw our cast diagram and we've got this equal to a positive a half so we tick where cos is positive. So cos is positive in the first and the fourth quadrant. From there we need to find inverse cos of 1 half, which is 60 degrees. Therefore, the angle in the first quadrant is going to be 60 degrees, and the angle in the fourth quadrant will be 360 minus 60, which is 300. Now, that's x plus 30 degrees gives us these two angles. Therefore, we need to take the plus 30 over and subtract. And then we have a final answer of x equal to 30 degrees or x equal to 270 degrees. Again, to show you a picture of what this would look like, here the green curve is our cos cosine graph and our yellow line there is um, y equals a half. We can clearly see that these two meet at 30 degrees one half and 270 degrees, one half. Now try these examples for yourself. Please pause the video. And the solutions are, for the first trig equation, x is 30 or 150 degrees. For the second trig equation, x is 116.565 or 243.435. And for the third equation there, we have x is 15, 75, 195 or 255 degrees. So today we have learned how to solve basic trig equations. And to do that, we need to follow these steps. We first of all rearrange, making sine, cos or tan the subject. We draw a cast diagram and identify the quadrants where the angles lie. We use exact value triangles or a calculator to obtain the angle x. And we define the angles in each quadrant and we make sure they lie within the range that is stated.